Hello, apa khabar ya? Um, so saya berada kat Istanbul sekarang ni. Jadi kami berada kat dalam palace ni. So I bersama dengan lunch bersama dengan uh, uh, Abang Jamin daripada Ghana. Ya, jadi uh, dia merupakan uh, seorang yang uh, senior eager manager yang baru umur 28 tahun. Uh, dan uh, mula dengan Forever Living iaitu tujuh tahun yang lalu iaitu umur 21 bila lah dia seorang uh, seorang uh, students ya uh, yang paling inspired dia adalah dia punya story iaitu dia memang uh, bermula dengan tak ada duit langsung nak jadi AS dan sebagainya so dia kena uh, berjalan kaki selama dua jam ya untuk bawa prospek ke office yang berada di Ghana tu. Jadi sekarang memang saya nak interview lah dengan uh, Benjamin ya. Benjamin. Okay. So yeah. Yes. All right. So uh, come. We, we, we okay. get closer. Maybe closer. you can hold the mic okay. here. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So yeah, Benjamin. So uh, you can share a bit. So I noticed that you are just started from as a student when you are 21 years old. Yeah. So what make you so Uh, so confidence on this uh, forever living and I, I noticed that when your outline just share the business to you straight okay. when you sign up sure yeah so what make you so inspired on this forever living all right okay first of all I, I greetings to everybody who, who watch this video um, my name is Anjini Kufi Benjamin from Ghana actually uh, I grew up in a village a village whereby you don't see light you don't see car you don't see anything okay and it's an island oh. so the only thing you see there is water water you don't see car oh okay. and that was where my parents were living and as a matter of fact my dad was a fisherman mm. and my mom was also a fishmonger mm -hmm. even though that was not where they were born and they they, they they were living in the city some time ago and then they went to the village mm. in search of a greener pasture mm. they need something um, to change their life mm. so on that island there's nothing like school Mm. All what you do is that when they give birth to you as a child, before you get to the age ages of 10, between 10 or from 7 to 13, they'll just train you on how to swim. Then you also join the fishing business. Mm. So I also happened to fall victim to that uh, particular system. So when I was growing at the age of 7, I knew how to swim. And my dad mm. made me join the fishing business. Mm. And at so that time, they were about... Uh, Um, we are about four children in Namna mm. and I'm happy to be the youngest among them. Mm. So as I was growing up, curiosity made me know that there is something called education. Mm. So I told mom and dad that mm -mm. Um, for me, I won't, be, I, won't, I won't do the fishing business again. I want to go back to school. Mm, you want to change? Yes. I need a change. I want to mm. go back to school. But you know, there was one particular challenge. Mm. Even though we were working on the river, trying to fish and get something for the family. What we are getting from that business mm. uh, couldn't supply the need of the family. Mm. And there is one dangerous aspect of working on that water, mm. which is there are trees and stamps on the, on the river. Mm. So sometimes when we go for fishing, our net that we use to fish gets stuck. And young children like us Mm. are trained on how to go d deep down the waters mm. to go and rescue the net for mm -hmm. business activities to go mm. on. So many children die out of that. It's very dangerous. Okay. Sometimes you can go spend between two to... It's a risky world. Very right? risky. Yeah. So many people pass on. Mm. But, but we went through and some of us were saved. Mm -mm. I told myself I have to go to school, but they have no money mm. to sponsor my education. So I have to hustle on my own. I remember during school time, um, You, 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 during vacations, whilst people are doing extra classes learning, you still have to go and hustle under the sun. Mm. You can be selling for people and mm. doing so many of crazy work. Mm. Now, so, to cut mm. the long story short, mm. after my, my senior high education, mm. I left my parents in a village and mm. I went to the city. Mm. They, they recommend, they linked me up to a family member who was living mm. in the city. Mm. That was at the age of 13. Mm. And trust me, that was the first time I saw car with my naked eyes. Mm. So I saw car at the age of 13 years. Mm, so car? Car. I mean car. Oh, you saw the car. The a, first time you the saw first the car. Time I saw a car was the at, the, at the age of 13. Okay. And that was when I started schooling. Mm. So life was very difficult. Mm. Sometimes during vacations, I have to go back mm. to the village and hustle, get some small money, mm -hmm. pay my fees. So my goal in life was I want to go to school, get something better, mm. and transfer my parents from that island to the city and also mm. give them a better lifestyle. Mm. So that was all what I was looking for. Mm. So after school, I keep moving from jobs to job, <coughs> from 
one job to the other but the mm. incomes i was getting from those jobs were something Less. small yeah it cannot feed myself to even talk of mm. my family mm. so um what i did was i will keep on searching until one day i met a, a gentleman who invited me to come and see the forever opportunity mm. and to be frank and sincere after seeing the opportunity i was so amazed Mm. Um, how the, the company plan is and how people are going to achieve success mm. Call, talking about the car mm. the travel experience and all those stuff so I told mm. myself this is where I have to be mm. I'm not going anywhere mm. but I have mm. a particular challenge and it was I have no money to get started mm-hmm. yeah, and where I, the I, I noticed that you say you are very tough in the first two years yeah, right? Yeah, so what made you uh, so determined in these two years in a private living even though you're very tough okay yeah you know from where i am to the office it's about um, if not of traffic to be like 30 minutes drive between 30, 30 minutes to, drive, to one yeah. hour drive and getting to the office becomes a, a challenge but then the goal is i need to get that money i need to work hard and get money and make sure i transfer my parent from the island to the city mm. so that was my aim Th- that is your big why that's yeah, my biggest why yeah, yeah, and i want why. to i want to change that uh, story of the family i want mm. to change the story of the family mm. so i was determined it was so, so tough sometimes you have no money for transportation you have to walk to the office in and out and one aspect of the whole thing is that even though I was working hard for the past two years, the income from forever business was so little, oh, yes, little. Yes. Sometimes with no income at the end of the month. Mm-mm. But then I was hopeful. And I know that so far as people were able to succeed, mm. I can also succeed through the same business. Yes, so I was persistent. And after two years, things began to change. And I remember when I got to assistant manager in a business, I was, I was being able to achieve my first goal, which is I got the money and I've been able to transfer my parents from the village to the city, establish a business for my mom, and I did the same thing for my dad as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I noticed that you, you told me that um, when you start beginning started, yeah. you had no money to, to, to become an assistant supervisor. Yeah, I have no so money. So how you overcome this? Good. Mm. So what I was doing is that even though I have no money to become an assistant supervisor, I begin to recommend the product to people. So I begin to get some customers made by Bit who are buying products. So I use their money to do my sign up and to qualify the the wholesale. Mm. Yeah, it took me some time, but I keep on persisting until I've been able to achieve that. Mm. And you, you when you uh, success to convince them and you try to bring them to the office. office yeah. And I in two mm. hours walking distance. Uh, two yeah, hours so, walking sometimes distance. they they will, they will not come with you. They will let you direct them to the office. Some of them have their own cars, so they yeah, want to yeah. drive. So, but you have to walk two hours well, to and, meet and them. And with them at the office. Meet them in, in the office. Yeah. They will drive, but w- you know, walking two hours, you know, <laughs> this is really, re- sure. really, is a great, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and with them at the office, and then they come, you serve them, they go back. Yeah. So that's what I was doing by then. Yeah. So, so when you finish uh, a closing, so that means you have to carry the products. You have to carry the products and walk back exactly, yeah. that, to your that, house, Absolutely, right? that's what you need to do. There's yes. no any other option. Yes. And there's no any other option. That was what we were doing, and mm. until until the business began to change. Yes. Okay. And after one year moving manager, I began to qualify my first travel. That was in South Africa. South Africa, South the first Africa, travel, yeah. the, your incentive there. Sure. I went to South Africa, mm. and also have the chance to go to Dallas. I was mm-hmm. in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And um, Stockholm as well. Yeah, Stockholm. Yeah. And, and I noticed uh, you, 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 are, uh, you are the guest speaker in Stockholm and yeah. Global Rally. Sure, I did that. Last yeah. year, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah, did that. Congratulations Thank to you. you. Thank and you. I'm really thanks so much to you, yeah, yeah Benjamin. And uh, so you're sharing to our Malaysians here. Okay. And of course, uh, in the Philippines, yeah? sure. Philippine friends also. Sure. So I really hope that your story really can inspire. So you see, mm-hmm. uh, there's nothing. Uh, there's impossible. nothing impossible yeah. as long as we have a big why mm-hmm. so there's no reason that's uh, to to there's no obstacles or, or no others reason exactly. if you want to success right yeah. correct exactly. yeah so that's why you see like uh, Benjamin uh, he's no car he's no transport but his determination he still carry on his his uh, uh, yeah. you know uh, what we call it your 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 goals that goals, you want yeah, to success but now in true, forever living. True forever, I have my own car now. 
Yeah, and I you bought have a your own car. car. Yeah, yeah. I bought a car too from Forever. Yes, from zero. You see, yeah. it's really from zero <laughs> so to now, hero. That's nothing. No, I drive impossible. my own car in Forever. Yeah, you yeah. see, only 28 years old. Yeah. But you have a really big dreams. You really a matured. You really <laughs> want to change your family life. I think this is uh, what we have should learn from uh, Benjamin's yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah, are a very great young man. Really can change your Thank own you. life and change your family life. Thank you. Thank you so much, You're Benjamin. Most welcome. I really I'm, I'm appreciate great. so much that you're sharing to all of us here. All right. Thank you. You're yeah? most welcome. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Thanks. So nampak kan so ini memang satu cerita yang benar-benar ya kisah benar yang memang dapat inspire kita ramai. Jadi tak ada alasan kalau kita nak berjaya tu memang tak ada sebarang alasan pun. Uh, nak berjaya saja satu saja uh, kita betul-betul nak buat buat je. Janganlah bagi apa-apa alasan untuk kita. Jalan kaki dua jam nak sampai satu office. So sampailah sekarang uh, dia adalah kenderaan ada transport sendiri dan boleh menukarkan nasib keluarga dia. Itu dia ya. Terima kasih sekali lagi daripada Benjamin. Okay, thank you.